Hey guys, it's your girl Victoria, back to you with another review for Married at First Sight Season 16, Episode 2 called Runaway Groom. Or, it had a question mark on it, so, Runaway Groom? I ain't no groom running away, okay? Like, I don't know why y'all be doing this with the little titles of the episode. Ain't nobody run away, okay? They sign a contract contractual agreement. They just doing this for play play to get you. <gasps> oh my gosh. <laughs> He ain't gonna run away. So anyway, we picked up where we left off last week with Shaquille and Kirsten. They getting married. She walking down the aisle. You can tell immediately off the back from the get go. As soon as she saw him, she was just like, "Oh, not a bald guy." He's <laughs> listen. Shaquille is happy. You know, his he was smiling. You know, just through the roof. He was just on top of the world. Because, of course, Kristen is a beautiful girl. So, for him, he hit the jackpot. He hit the lotto. And I feel like with a lot of these people, you know, a lot of these couples that be on this show, the guys, for the most part, I feel like if we looked at the tallies, the guys look out always way more than the girls be looking out. So, it's like, first off, I don't even know why Kristen on this show to begin with from the get-go, just based off the way she is. But, Shaquille, he, he's so ecstatic. And, you know, immediately when she comes down, he's just like, oh, you know, God didn't play with you. You know, he likes what he sees, da, 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 da. Like, she's beautiful. So she's just like, thank you. But she don't say nothing about him. And she's, like, just gritting through her teeth. And uh, I feel so, feel, I feel for Shaquille this whole scene of the ceremony because I'm just like, bro, I know you love what you see, but she don't love what she see. And she just, the whole time, you can tell she was trying to, smile and stuff but like her, you could not tell me she didn't like what she like she was just getting through the motions just to get through like the ceremony part of it but to me I just truly deep in my heart feel like she was just like oh my gosh what have I done you know she just her smiles was so fake especially when they well, the kiss okay she told her friends and to us um, the people who be watching on TV and all that stuff. She told us last week, listen, this is how you going to know if I like homeboy or not. If I kiss him, I like him. If I give him my cheek and he kiss me and I have him kiss me on the cheek, then I don't like him. I ain't feeling him. So when it came to the kiss of the ceremony tonight, he was going in for the kiss. He didn't even ask her, like, may I? Like, he just went in for the kiss. And she went like, hmm. So he kissed her on the cheek. And it just felt felt so awkward her homegirls already knew it was what it was because she already done told them and us so they was kind of like oh no and it's like well this is what the producers wanted anyway you know i know some people be feeling some type of way and i felt like uh cringe but at the same time it's like i can't be mad because y'all knew what y'all was doing when y'all chose her to be on this damn show. Because you already knew off the bat that she had a lot of things that she wanted, all that stuff. And y'all still went with her. Why? For the entertainment, for, for us to watch. Even though you should know by now, it triggers us to be watching this train wreck of a show of these people coming on. That don't really have genuine intentions. That be having standards all the way up to the skyscrapers. Like... Come on, we already knew what it was. So, okay, this is what it's going to be. They're going to be that couple where she don't like him and he likes her and they're probably not going to work out at the end. I just hope she don't be an Alyssa from the other season and just be like, I hate him. So, fingers crossed that at least she could be cordial. Maybe she could be a Karen like everybody else talking about and maybe warm up to him by the end or like Deanna or Jamie from season one. We'll see how that works out. But uh, for the past few seasons... Uh, from the credibility of Married at First Sight, I don't see that happening. But, you know, like I said, Shaquille, he's floored. He calls her beautiful and lets us know in the confessional after they got married and all that stuff that she's completely his type. We don't hear nothing that she's saying to the confessional because we already know what it was from her facial expression, her body language. So it is what it is. So they sit down and talk a little bit. So she's like, he's bald number one. And what, what what she said something else, and he's younger than her, so that's two strikes already. But I guess his personality and nice teeth is outweighing that. You sure about that? I don't think so. I think you're just telling us that to keep us calm, cool, and all that stuff. But no. First off, body language and your reactions and facial expressions say everything. So even though you're trying to make it seem like it ain't what it is, 
we can see through it, uh, Kirsten. So you don't got to lie to us. You know, maybe you could lie to him, but I, I'm sure he's smart enough because he's educated to know that you may not be feeling him like he's feeling you. So we'll see how that works out because that's all we see for them for the rest of the damn uh, episode. And then we get to, oh, no, that's it for them. <laughs> like I said, that's it. So after that, we get to Gina. She goes dress shopping, wedding dress shopping, and then Clint goes tuck suit shopping. And as she's trying on dresses, I don't know what her mama trying to be. I don't know if the mama trying to be her best friend. I don't know if the mama is just, just really be acting like that. But I'm just like, why your daughter seem more mature than you? And you the mama. Because I guess one of the first dress that she put on, the mama was like, oh, you look like a bad bitch. And I'm like, <laughs> I'm like, I'm just... I'm like, first off, I'm not getting this is how you really be acting. I don't know if it's the cameras that making her feel nervous, so she got to be acting. But I'm like, um, mom, can, can you tone it down? Like, unless this is really how you, I feel like it's not really how she is. But I'm just like, you're doing a little too much. A little too much. But okay, I'm, I'm going to try to go with the flow. But, you know, you just striking me off kind of weird. So then when she puts on the next dress, you know, the mom's like, oh, yeah, that looks nice. It's showing off that booty, that booty. And I'm like, okay, you you really trying to be her friend. And maybe you are really her, like, best friend and stuff, like me and my mom. But, like, my mom don't be talking to me like that. But, you know, everybody's not the same. But I'm just kind of like, I don't know what she was trying to be doing with all that stuff. Like, oh, you just look like a bad bee. Okay, thank you very much. But she decides to go with a second dress and... You know, I think it's what she chose is pretty. You know, I think it was way better than the first one because the first one was a little bit too plain for me because I'm a person that always like the diamonds and the glitters and all that stuff. So, and the ladies. So, what she chooses as her second dress, you know, as her actual dress, the second one that she put on, tried on, whatever. I thought it was nice. I thought it was beautiful. Clint. Oh, I think the first suit he put on was, or tux, whatever, it was, I liked it. Well, out of his options, that was beautiful, that was beautiful, okay? The second one he tried on, that he's like, oh, I'm going to go, I'm going to go with it's some tan gray suit. What is this? I'm like, you look like you about to be a guest at the wedding. You don't look like no groom to me. Like, the outfit, I'm like, what, what are we doing here? Why did you think this was a, a good choice? That doesn't make you stand out. First impressions are everything, but it's like, I mean, I'm not saying it don't look good on him. I'm just saying this was not like, oh, I'm going to be a groom type of thing. This is going to be my first impression type of suit. I mean, it was a first impression, sure enough, but I I, I just didn't like it. But I'm going to move on. I'm not going to stay too much on that his outfit because then we're going to get to Nicole. She goes wedding dress shopping. And the first dress she put on, she liked it, but she didn't like it for her. She didn't feel like it was good enough for her. So the second dress she goes with, which the second one was cute to me. But as, in my personal opinion, I think she should have went with the first dress. But, you know, if she likes the second dress better, that's her. It's her body, her personality. So it got to fit what she wants, not what I want. I'm just saying, I thought the first one looked better on her. And then we get to Chris. He goes tux suit shopping. And the tux he shoot he chooses is like very old school i'm like are we in like the 80s 90s era if that's you that's your personality that's fine i just me personally i wasn't too fond of it but okay that's what he wants to go with so then we go to jasmine she goes wedding dress shopping and the first dress she chooses i thought was gorgeous but you know since she does the beauty pageant and stuff she felt like it was more geared towards her being like a beauty pageant person so she went with another dress and the other dress was beautiful. Don't get me wrong, especially when she got her makeup done and stuff at the ep end of the episode. She looked absolutely gorgeous. But like I said, for me personally, I like the first one better on her, you know, better. But it ain't about me, it's about her. So then we move on to Aries. He goes tuck suit shopping and stuff. The first one he put on was nice. But then he decides to go with the second look, which was more classical black suit. It looked nice. I think he did good with his choice classical but sometimes there's nothing wrong with being classic okay you could still be your own person in a classical outfit because at the end of the day the outfit don't make you you make the outfit but a lot of people don't realize that a lot of people can't do that for some reason so we're just gonna move on from that then we get dominique she goes wedding dress shopping and she we see her try on one dress and that's the dress she chose and i'm just like 
I, you know, I don't, I personally don't like to be, you know, talked about because of my age type of thing. That's why I really don't be telling people how old I am, even though I feel like, because the thing is, when people meet me, you know, side note, we're going to talk about me for two seconds. When people meet me, they think I'm of older age. But then when I finally tell them my age, they'd be like, oh, but you're just a baby. I'm like, uh-uh, uh-uh, we're not going to do that, okay? Just because that's my actual age don't mean nothing, okay? All my siblings, I have three older brothers. All my siblings are way older than me. My oldest brother is 10 years older. Second oldest brother is two years older. The third oldest brother, he's six years older than me. So I had no choice but to be hanging out around with older folks. So usually when people see me, they talk to me, they think I'm way older. And when I tell them my age, then they just say, oh, you're a baby. Like, no, why can't we stick with what you, it ain't about my age, okay? It's about how I act. It's about my maturity. Treat me based off my maturity, not my age. That being said, however, um, we come to uh, Dominique. Ah, yeah. Listen, I try not to be that person that just be like, oh, your age and all that stuff. But, um... I, I don't know why she's on the show. I really don't because I literally refer to her as a 25-year-old. And I feel so bad because I'm only like a few years older than her. But at the same time, I'm just like, girl, the first, because um, the reason why I'm saying all this, you know, you might be like, okay, where are you getting at with this? Because of the dress she chose, I'm just like, this is the first dress she chose. And it's just like, it seems fitting for your age and personality. And I'm just like, you know, I'm, I feel like she could have found something better to wear, but I'm just like, okay, this is what she's going to go with. That's what she want. But I'm just like, girl, okay, we, this is, you just here for a good time and not a long time. That's all I get from Dominique. And then we get to McKinley, you know, he goes tuck suit shopping and the suit he chose is nice. I think he too found the first one. It was like, oh, this is it. It's nice. It's cute. But I'm just like. I, I was trying to have hope for you guys, but this ain't going to work out, man. I, I really thought you guys was going to be good, but just every second I see you guys further and further into the season, even though we're only on the second episode, I'm like, this is not going to work out. And, you know, just from the intel I've heard of sneak peeks and what's going to be happening, this is not going to work out, but we're going to get to that whenever that situation arises. So, okay, we then get to Nicole and Chris. They are the next to be married. So I guess they was asking her about, you know, sex and all that stuff. So she don't want to have sex before getting married because she don't want the next day he going to be meeting her family, you know, for the post-morning brunch, post-wedding brunch, whatever. And, you know, he has to talk to them while he just defiled their daughter and sister and stuff the night before. Okay. Well, first off, so what? You know... I, I I really what the so what? Yeah, you not Nicole. So what do you think is gonna happen later on down the line if this thing do work? Y'all gonna be doing the do and you probably gonna be going out. Listen, it don't even be the next day. Like y'all might be doing stuff and then you be going to see your mama or his mama literally that night. Y'all might do have a little quickie in the morning before work. And by that night, you're going to be visiting his family for like a birthday party or something. So I don't know why the fact that you guys having sex the night before is going to ruin y'all talking to him, talking to your people the next morning. Girl, if you don't get your, get, go to the, to the hotel, to a hotel room, whatever, do your thing. And then the why I don't, I don't understand that because I'm just like, that's, <laughs> that's normal for people. Like, I don't get it. Like, you better be married. Like, you married to the man. Like, you know how many couples, you know, be doing something, like, literally, and then be meeting. Okay. Once again, random side note because it's not, not too much to take from this episode. So, I'm just going to be putting my little side notes in there. Hopefully, you like these little miniature story things. I had a birthday party. <laughs> last year my birthday party i had a little pool party thing and then we went out to eat and stuff okay i had a friend and her and her you know sneaky link whatever you know they came to the pool party and then we all you know went to the house to change and stuff they went back to their place 
And, you know, we all went to the restaurant and I'm texting. I'm like, okay, where you where y'all at? So she ends up showing up, but her sneaky link didn't show up to the thing because, you know, they, you know, a little couple of things that happened at the house and, you know, he fell asleep and she came by herself because, you know, she real the real MVP and showed up. And um, I'm just like, okay, I'm like, I ain't mad at it, but I'm just like, dang. Dang, like, really? He just out for the count after that? So, Nicole, back to, you know, I'm rounding this up <laughs> to Nicole because I know some people are just like, Victoria, come on, get on with it, get on. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I just got to put that, you know, I got to put a little spice, whatever you want to call it, into this thing. So, moral of the story, it don't matter, okay? Doing the dude the night before or right after, it shouldn't affect him talking to your peoples. So, Nicole, you weird for even saying that because people going to have sex all the time, every day all times of the day, on their lunch break, everything. So, you doing, okay. Anyway, I don't got time. Uh, I already talked too much. I already talked too much. So, I'm becoming Nicole. That's, pray for me. But anywho, <laughs> so then she gets the gifts from Chris. It's, he got She got the engagement ring from Chris, from jamesallen.com, and that's easy as one, two, three. She got little crystal things from him, and she was like, oh, that's so crazy, because she got him crystal things too. And the letter... That he sent for her, I guess, to tell her about her gifts are in parts. She's like, oh my gosh, I did the same thing for him. So then in turn, she's like, oh, we're meant to be. He got her a necklace. And she's like, oh my gosh, I didn't even bring a necklace. Oh my gosh, he just he just really just knows me. And it's like, I love him already because no one other than family has ever put this much thought into my gifts and stuff. So she's like so in love with him. She's like, is it weird that I love him already before I even walk down the aisle to see him? Yes. Anybody can get you gifts, okay? This is just, just for, to, you know, first impressions, okay? Let's see if he does that post-marriage, you know, after you guys have been in a relationship for like one year, two years. So, okay, okay. So she's all, you know, get emotional, crying and stuff. And I'm like, okay, here we go. And then we go over to Chris. He got some crystals and stuff from her. Like I said, wrote her a note. She wrote him a note about his gifts are in parts. And so he's appreciative of that too. And then... You know, while they're getting dressed, you can tell Chris is getting nervous because now he's starting to do his Arnold Schwarzenegger uh, impersonation. And then he does his Morgan Freeman impersonation. I'm like, okay, first off, with the Arnold one, okay, I can give you some leeway. You did okay with that. The Morgan Freeman one, you need to stop. You need a the door. You need to go back and come back when you've been practicing for like 48 hours because we do not need you. No. Don't don't be showing her your Morgan Freeman impersonation because it's not gonna work. Cause it don't sound good. It sounds terrible. Okay. But you know, he getting nervous and all that stuff and talking about he has dry mouth as he's walking his mom down the aisle and he's like, but he knows he's hydrated because he did drink a lot of water and his pee is clear. Uh, Chris, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> thank you for the information. Uh, we didn't need to know that, but thank you for letting us know that you stay hydrated because your urine is clear in the toilet. Thank you. We really appreciate that. So then we get Nicole. She walks down the aisle and, you know, they both seem happy with each other. She calls him handsome. He calls her beautiful. And, you know, when the official was talking about Nicole, Chris did seem a little nervous and scared from his facial expression and his eye shifting. But I guess it was okay because the rest of the ceremony goes well and they kiss at the end. Then we move on to Gina and Clint. It's their wedding day. And as they're getting ready, I just wanted to put in that sign note that Clint said he was 40 and he slept with 65 women. 65. So automatically, you already know he slept with multiple women in a year, which is, I'm not saying there's anything wrong with that. That's how he do. That's how he do. But I'm just like, were you literally counting every woman you slept with? I mean, weird flex, but okay. You know, guys just going to do guys. Some females do it too, but I'm just like, okay. You slept with 65 women. Is this a bragging thing for you? Maybe for the guys. Maybe that's a guy thing. You know, I don't know about none of that. But I'm just like, uh, okay, Clint. Maybe don't tell her that. I mean, if you want to, you can. But I'm just like, um, don't maybe don't start off with that. She's going to watch it. Just let her watch it and see what you done said. Because this is not something I, I feel like is a flex. But whatever. I just wanted to put in that sign note, you know, for those who don't watch and just want to watch me, which I really appreciate by the way. But yeah, uh, Clint slept with 65 women and he's 40 years old. Okay. So he just wanted y'all to know that because he told all of America this and everybody else who watched that's not in America. 
So then we get to Gina, her getting ready. And um, I'm looking at her mom's dress. And I'm like, where is the mom going? Is she going to go to the wedding or she got her own little birthday bash that she throwing for herself? Because I'm like, I love the dress because the, the sparkles and all that stuff. But it had a train on it and everything. And I'm like, so are you trying to take your daughter's shine or be like, oh, it's her wedding day. So let me dress to the best of my ability to see if I can maybe even outdo her or something. I don't know what the mom was trying to do. But I'm just like, OK, just the way she was acting this whole since day one. I'm just like, maybe this is really her, but it's just a little too much for me. Like, your daughter seems more calm, cool, collective than you are. But, okay, that's how her mom is. But I like the dress, though. I'm not saying nothing bad about the dress. I'm just like, I didn't think the mother of the uh, bride at a wedding would be dressing, like, all possessed like this. But, okay, mama, do you. And uh, we get to the wedding. Gina walks down the aisle. They both look happy. And, you know, her dog, Hank, was the ring bearer. So, everybody seemed like, happy for the most part, but I feel like I did see some looks from Clint's side of the family, and they kind of look like, oh, she had a dog, ill, And I'm just like, listen, if Clint's happy with it, then y'all should be, like, whatever, you know, go with the flow type of thing. And uh, the ceremony goes well, and they kiss, and it looked like it was a deep kiss, because, like, they was leaning in. She was, like, leaning her head back a little bit. So I'm like, I think this is the best kiss thus far of this season that we've seen of the wedding. So this is only the third one. But it looks like it got better as each wedding has gone because Shaquille and uh, Kirsten, they didn't do it for us this so far. So uh, they go to sit down and talk, Gina and Clint, and come to find out. First off, Clint said he loves what he sees, so that's great. But um, come to find out, they both live in the same high-rise condo. Would you look at that? That is so interesting. And that's actually perfect. Like, I'm not going to make no jokes. That's actually perfect in my personal opinion. Because I'm just like, even if it don't work out, y'all don't got to move. And even and if it does work out, if y'all want to still take it slow as some of these couples do, even though they don't end up staying together when they live separately, y'all could still live at the same place. You don't got to worry about leaving. You, you don't got to worry about like, okay, me moving in with you is going to be farther from where I work or, you know, vice versa. Because we both live in the same thing. So even if one person moves into another's apartment or if they just choose to stay in separate apartments, but just sleep in each other's um, apartments, condos every night, it'll be great because y'all not any further from each other's jobs. I think that's great. I thought, you know, and that's a coincidence. That's, Listen, I'm not going to do no more side notes. I was going to do another side note <laughs> about me and my husband. But, then, you know, we when we met, we realized we only lived five minutes apart from each other. That's it. I, I don't want to say too much because I already talked too much in this uh, review because I feel like this review could have been like 10 minutes. But, you know, sometimes I got to put a little ad in my little two cents. So that's that's all. That's all. Uh, next to take from that is uh, Nicole and Chris. They sit down to talk, and Nicole likes Chris. She tells, because, you know, producers are saying, like, what do you want to know about Chris? So then she goes into a whole spill of everything she want to know, because she wants to know everything about him, which I can understand, because I do, too. But can we do it in due time? Like, we don't got to ask 3,000 questions tonight. Just over time, as you guys are hanging together, going on to the honeymoon and stuff, that's when you can ask that gradually, and then you'll just get your all your intel by maybe the end of the eight weeks. But she want to know everything right now. And plus, you know, she talked too much. So they talk, you know, Chris said he likes her too. And Nicole is telling us in the confessional after they kind of, you know, doing a little talk and whatnot, that if it don't work out, she feels like she's doomed because Chris is all she's ever wanted. And if she can't make it work with all she's ever wanted, then she, there's no hope for her. And I don't think that's correct. I honestly think like that just because... He's all you've ever wanted doesn't mean that's all you ever needed. So I'm just like, don't think just because if this doesn't work out, that is the end for you. Because there's how many, how many other guys are there out there that's probably what you wanted and more and who's better for you and what you need to have. So I don't think she should just think like, okay, this is it. No, if anything, this might help you find the person that is going to be your forever person as People on the seasons like to say, so we'll see how that works out. And then lastly, we get to Jasmine and Eris' wedding day. And 
Eris is waving goodbye to all the hoes or whatever in the at the window saying his hot boy summer days are over. We'll see if that's the truth. And then we have Jasmine and her sisters and her mom. They pray, so I thought I was cute. And lastly, before the end of the episode, we got uh, Eris's cousin coming to talk to him. One last resort to get him to not do this wedding. And, you know... I'm just like, you talking all this mess? First off, you know he gonna do it anyway. Maybe the producers told you to come to him to talk. Maybe you was already over it, but they said to create some drama to make us like, <gasps> even though nobody's doing that, to, you know, say, listen, if you want to leave right now, we could go leave right now. Girl, I don't remember what her name was, but just t- take, your, take your ass inside the, the ceremony set area. Sit down and wait for the wedding. Okay, first off, you putting your boobs on display. The boobs ain't fitting with the dress. Okay, I'm just looking at it. I'm like, oh, girl. don't get me wrong. You got a better body than me. But at the same time, I'm just like, this boobs with this dress with no bra. Not even the one that like the, the tapey ones that make it look like you got a push up bra but you know you don't got no bra like you don't even have that on like your your boobs are just hanging in your dress and it's just like you really about to let the producers make you be like some type of a villain because you know he ain't gonna do it we just doing this for dramatic effect because i bet you 100 percent bet you when we come back next week he gonna be like nah i'm gonna go through with the wedding so what we doing this for Anybody who watched Married at First Sight for this damn long knows ain't nothing finna happen. He gonna get married next week. So that's where the episode ends. And then we gonna see next week where all the people, all the cast members are talking to their significant others, families, and friends. And then they gonna be grilling them like they always do for no apparent reason. You got freaking Dominique's mama telling, uh, Mc- what, McKinley? Oh, he seems nice. But Jeffrey Dahmer was nice. What? First off. See, like I said, all the producers must be paying y'all to be acting like this because I'm just like, you the one who signed your daughter up for the show. So I don't want to hear nothing from you of trying to be critis- critical to no type of man because you knew what you're, you were signing your daughter up for because I bet you've been watching since season one just like my mama. So I don't want to hear from you, Miss Dominique's mom. And like I said, y'all producers be doing the most because at this point, it's like these are not genuine reactions. These are not genuine questions the the people be asking this is producers trying to create drama so we could be entertained but we are tired of that we just want genuine genuine connections and genuine marriages but yeah we still watch so at the same time it's kind of like anything i'm saying now is kind of you know it it, they don't even i I don't even know anymore (laughs) But I'm still going to watch because I'm still going to be here next week to watch and all the other 3,000 weeks every se- you know each season goes through. So anyways, uh, thank you guys for watching. If you like this video, please give me a thumbs up. If you like me, if you laughed at least once, please subscribe. And also, please comment. Let me know what you guys thought about any of the weddings, any of the people. Let's just talk kiki, whatever. Other than that, be easy breezy lemon squeezy. Not whatever, okay? I don't, I'm not trying to be rude. You know, I was just trying to see if I could get one more laugh in there. If I didn't, that's okay. And like I said, see you next week for the next one.